This is five on your side at six, focused on you. First tonight, a weather impact alert. The dangerous heat hanging around, and we're seeing a few storms. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mike Bush. And I'm Ann Allred. The storms are bringing badly needed rain for some and a brief break from the heat. So let's get straight to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. Unfortunately, those storms are not that widespread. We could certainly use the rain, but you see some of the clouds that we're looking at here as you look south of Highway 6440 here from Forest Park looking on to the south. And we've seen the temperatures really back off to around 80 in the areas where we've had some rain cooled air. Forest Park at last check at 87 down to 82 right now in Arnold. So these showers, thunderstorms, while they're not severe, they definitely put a dent in the heat. Humidity, though, stays up. You see there was one right over St. Louis, went into the Metro East, fell apart. Another one developing down towards Sunset Hills. And then the larger cluster right now along Interstate 55 heading down into St. Genevieve County. Some areas have seen more than two inches of rainfall here. That's drifting into portions of Monroe as well as Randolph County. So west of Sparta, south of Waterloo, some pretty intense rainfall there. Not severe, but you get some downpours. These showers and thunderstorms will tend to diminish with the loss of the heat from today, and then it's back into the heat again tomorrow. So we're in the mid 90s for highs with the humidity, especially in the areas that saw some rain today. Your humidity levels will stay high. So once again, triple digit heat indices tomorrow afternoon for the fourth day in a row, which means that heat advisory continues for the metro area. That's why our weather impact alert is still in effect, Ann. Just within the last hour, a hearing to decide if a convicted killer should remain on death row wrapped up in St. Louis County. Marcellus Williams was charged with a 1998 murder in University City, but he said he's innocent. Our Justina Cornell has been in the courtroom. She's live in Clayton. Justina. Well, just last week, Williams and, attorney, and his attorneys tried to reach a plea deal. However, the attorney general stalled that decision and appealed that decision. And the Missouri Supreme Court sided with the attorney general, saying an evidentiary hearing needed to happen. And that's where we land today. Now, let's take a breakdown, a little bit more details of today's hearing. An expert in DNA testing said Marcellus Williams' DNA was not on the murder weapon. We've learned the weapon was mishandled and new testing determined the DNA on the weapon is actually from an investigator on the case and testing couldn't exclude the original prosecutor Kevin Larner. Now before a judge today, Larner admitted he was told the killer was wearing gloves and that's why he touched the knife. The original defense attorneys in court said they didn't realize the weapon was touched by original detectives and prosecutors. Now the attorney general's office argued there was no proof in bad faith of destruction of evidence, said Williams attorneys were trying to hurt the character of the original prosecutor and discredited their witnesses today. Now following the hearing we heard from the co-director of Missourians to abolish the death penalty, who said Williams took an, an Alford plea to save his life. You cannot bring somebody back from the dead. And however he and his attorneys choose to save his life, that doesn't mean he's guilty. It only means that he wants to live. Now, the original defense attorney on this case also admitted he was an attorney for another notorious murder case at the same time of the trial in 2001. He said Williams case suffered because of this and said, quote, he did not get our best end quote. Now, the judge in this case will review today's hearing and has to respond before September 13th. Reporting live, Justina Cornell, five on your side. That notorious murder case Justina just mentioned changed courthouse security forever. Kenneth Bumrock went to the St. Louis County Courthouse for a divorce proceeding in 1992. Inside the courtroom, he pulled two handguns from his briefcase and opened fire. He shot five people, including his estranged wife, Mary. She died. The other four victims survive. Bumrock was sentenced to death, and he died in prison of natural causes in 2014. Ted Drews Jr. has died. His name will always be associated with frozen custard, which he sold for more than 80 years. His father, Ted Sr., opened his first custard stand in St. Louis in 1930. In 1985, Ted Jr. expanded the Chippewa location from five, five serving windows to 12. He also invented the concrete, a custard so thick you can turn it upside down without spilling it. Ted Drews Jr. was 96 years old. Funeral arrangements are still being finalized. Developing tonight, St. Louis County Police are investigating a woman who was accused of sexually abusing a 13-year-old. Investigators say that woman was considered a church mentor. Tonight, police are asking anyone who believes they may have been victimized by the 25-year-old woman 
to come forward. Our Megan Kernan has been looking into this case all day, and she joins us in the newsroom. Megan. Police say Brandy James met the young girl at the House of Deliverance Church in St. John. We talked to professionals who investigate child abuse cases in our area. They say this type of case is always hard to hear because our kids shouldn't have to endure these victimizations by adults. Court documents say the victim's mother discovered her 13-year-old daughter's diary. In it, her daughter wrote she had been involved in sexual acts with a 22-year-old church mentor. So we went to the House of Deliverance Church looking for answers, but it was closed. We contacted the church's pastor, Eric Battle, who says Brandy James has never been an employee or mentor at the church. Amy Robbins with the Child Advocacy Center says 90% of the time, it's not strangers who abuse our kids. It is individuals um, that the children have a relationship with, are part of their family, that are within that inner circle, um, that have that trust and access to that child or teenager. Investigators found proof on the girl's phone that she had been sexually abused at least twice in 2022. Officials say the now 25-year-old told other people about the incidents, but refused to speak to police. Abuse starts with um, first looking for a vulnerable child um, that they can build that relationship with, and then what we would call manipulate or grooming the situation or the environment in order to make sure that they can take advantage of them in those ways. When it comes to James, Battle said her relationship with the alleged victim took place outside of the church without any involvement with the church. As if you do believe that there are potentially other victims in the case, we just really encourage parents to have that conversation early and often um, with their children so that this topic is normalized um, and that it isn't something that they feel ashamed of or uncomfortable to go to parents about. The pastor says he's been assisting police in the investigation. Anyone who believes they may have been victimized by James or has any information about this case should call St. Louis County Police at 314-615-5400. James has been charged with two counts of statutory sodomy and one count of child molestation. The 25-year-old is currently being held on a $300,000 bond. A danger lurking in our own backyards has paralyzed a Hazelwood teenager. Tracy Hinson talked with the teen's family today and experts about the odds of catching a similar illness in our area. BB is my son. He's 18 years old, uh, recent uh, high school graduate class of 2024. Up until a few weeks ago, BB was enjoying his summer. On August 8th, he complained of a headache with a little dizziness. A few days later, his parents thought BB was having a stroke. His speech was slurred. Uh, he couldn't raise his arms up and he couldn't smile. Tests revealed BB had West Nile. Muscle aches, joint pains, abdominal pain, uh, fever, headache. Uh, the usual very non-specific type of symptoms. BB's case is more rare. A small fraction will actually develop what we we'll call a neuroinvasive disease, which is the attack of the virus on our nervous system, the brain or the spinal cord. He's paralyzed from the neck down and on a ventilator to help him breathe. It's going to be a marathon of intense uh, therapy and rehab. Uh, they've told me it could take a year to two years which is why the proctors are asking for your help. He does have a, a GoFundMe that we have established. Every penny of that GoFundMe is going to go specifically to his rehab and therapy to get him back walking and, and doing everything that a normal teenager should be able to do. While BB recovers, St. Louis County teams continue to track West Nile. Typically throughout the mosquito season, there's really not much West Nile at the beginning of the year, but by about this time of the year, we see it pretty much everywhere throughout St. Louis County. Bug spray and limiting time outdoors are the only option for lowering your risk of contracting West Nile virus. Tracy Hinson, five on your side. St. Louis County and Dr. Mannion report an increase in cases during the last few weeks of summer every year. Coming up, burglars at a South City Cafe for the fourth time. The big change the owners are making to keep this from happening again. Plus, the Cardinals are setting records for ticket prices and attendance the trend that's catching a lot of attention.